What motivates you? What motivates me? Let's explore those things as we start talking about these theories of motivation. But first, I have made some Cornell style fill in the blank notes for free. If you are interested in those that follow along with these notes, there's a link down in the description below. Check those out if you like it. Let me move my face around. Let's get going. What is motivation? Three big types. Okay, so the first type we're going to talk about biological motives. So these are innate things, things that we have for survival, hunger, thirst, avoiding pain, drives that we have to keep us alive in this world. We have stimulus motives, inborn, but not really for survival. Things like curiosity, seeking out to learn new things, desire to know new information. You get on YouTube and you go down rabbit holes. That is stimulus motives, right? Trying to be stimulated, trying to be interested in different things. And thirdly, we have learned motives. Power, status, achievement, maybe approval from other people. I have Boston Marathon up there. Within the running community, Boston as a marathon is a kind of a high level of achievement. You can kind of walk around other runners and be like, I've run the Boston Marathon very pretentiously. But it's an achievement thing, right? People want to achieve, maybe not even necessarily run the Boston Marathon, but just want to say that you ran the Boston Marathon. What else we got? So that's motivation. Our first big theory is our instinct theory, innate and consistent pattern of complex behaviors. So these are things that we're born with. They're inside us. When we're born, we don't have to learn them. Fight or flight is a good example of this in humans. We have that instinct in us ready to go. Human instincts, we have the drive to eat, drink, shelter, reproduce. Now, fixed action behaviors, those are with animals. And let me give you a couple examples. Sea turtles moving to the ocean. Have you ever seen this? It's crazy, right? These little baby sea turtles, gigs get laid in the sand, they hatch, they crawl out, and immediately they shoot to the ocean, right? That's a fixed action behavior. Uh, kangaroos going to their mother's pouches, birds making nests. These are all fixed action behaviors in animals. These ideas fit well with the evolutionary psychology perspective, right? They see these traits as adaptations over time, right? Remember the survival of the fittest, natural selection. So the sea turtles in this instance that had that innate drive to go to the ocean are the ones that survived and then passed that adaptation on to their offspring. Finally, though, some, some arguments against this would be that humans with our cerebral cortex we can override our instincts, right? Our behaviors are too complex just to regard as fully uh, instincts. And we can, we can choose to do other things besides that. Next theory, we got the drive reduction theory by a guy named Clark Hole. This is my favorite way to remember this. I'm driving fast. Hold on. It's ridiculous. I'm so sorry. Right? But drive theory, drive reduction theory, Clark Hole. Hold on, everybody. Uh, he talks about four factors that drive us to do certain things. So he has needs, drives, responses, and goals. Let me give you an example. If you are hungry, right? That is a need. The drive is to get you food. Maybe you do that by getting a job, earning money. And then your goal at the end is to get food, right? So drive reduction theory, needs, drives, responses, goals, Right, so I got the pizza right there. Oh man, that pizza looks delicious. We'll talk more about things besides hunger that motivate us. Drive, get a job, earn some money, and then go to the supermarket, get me some fresh fruit. Delicious. A physiological need driven to maintain homeostasis, right? That idea of equilibrium, right? Right now, I am at homeostasis. I had lunch an hour ago. I'm feeling good. I'm not hungry. But in four or five hours, right, I'm going to be needing a snack. Because I'm hungry, I'm out of equilibrium. And so you go through that cycle, need, drive, response, goal. And you keep that trying to maintain that homeostasis. We have primary drives, right? These are uh, food, warmth, things needed for, for survival. And then of course, secondary drives, things like money that are gonna get us those primary factors. All right, next up we have incentive theory. Incentive theory, while drives are internal, the need to sleep, the need to eat, or drink, incentives are external. Earning rewards for purchases releases dopamine, makes you feel good. For example, I hit me up some Starbies, love Starbucks, but I gotta get that points up, right? I earn some, I get some points, oh man, exciting. Love me some 7-Eleven Slurpees, 
that seventh cup is free, whew, you know I'm getting me a free Slurpee when I hit that seventh cup. But what's important here is the law of effect. So any behavior that leads to desirable outcome is going to get repeated. So if you get that dopamine hit, you get that incentive, it's going to push you to do that over and over again. Companies know this, business knows this, and they exploit it. We have the arousal theory. Uh, my favorite name, Yerkes Dodson. I don't know why I say it like that, but it helps me remember it. Yerkes Dodson, also called the inverted U, which probably should be called just an N or an upside down U, but I don't know. Those are the names. Arousal theory, Yerkes Dodson and inverted you trying to maintain optimal levels of physical arousal now you know this you've experienced this right you don't want to be too low you're lethargic you're not thinking you're just kind of tired and out there you don't want to be too high you're overstimulated you can't focus you want to get that sweet spot right in the middle and that's the arousal theory so not to relax or stress think about a job interview you want to go in here's my here's my biggest piece of advice with job interviews be the person they want to work with right Beyond any questions you think. All right, that's a pro tip. But you don't want to go in too relaxed, right? If you're too calm. I've been, on a lot of, I've been in on a lot of interview committees. People that come in, they're nervous, but they're just kind of quiet and calm, right? That's not what you want. You also don't want to be freaking out, not being able to think clearly. So you want that optimal stress. My brother always says you kind of want a little sweaty hands when you're, <laughs> when you're in a job interview. Not too sweaty, just a little bit of sweaty hands. So too low, right? We talked about this. Performance uh, suffers some boring AP psychology lecture, hard to focus, hard to learn, right? You're, you're understimulated, but too high, you're anxious, you're overwhelmed, you can't think clearly. Perhaps you have got, you've given a speech and gone blank. If you haven't, it's awesome. Uh, actually, it's terrifying and awful. So if you get up there and you're really nervous, you know, a couple kids present, other kids present, and then you get up and it's your turn and you've memorized your speech and you're ready to go and just nothing, terrifying right? But you're overstimulated. You're far too on the side of the stress scale over there. Uh, if you've ever gone bungee jumping, you should. It's awesome. My wife and I went when we were in Switzerland and it was amazing. We took a gondola up and then we took another gondola over this huge lake and we're all in this crammed in this little tiny gondola up there and they go five, four, three, two, one, bungee. And you have to jump. The guy was very specific. He said, it's not bungee falling. It's bungee jumping get out of there. And I just remember five, four, three, two, one, bungee and I jump and it felt like a movie, like everything slowed down and my mind, I was just overstimulated. I could not process what was going on, right? I was far on the stress side. Then we got self-actualization. You may have heard of this, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Abraham Maslow, in his theory, he says the lowest levels first must be met before a person can move up the pyramid. So if you look here, we got physiological needs, food, basic needs for living, right? Food, food, sleep, shelter. Then we have safety, having a safe home, having consistency at home. We talk a lot about this. Uh, I remember in my education classes, they would say, if you have a student come in and they're, they miss breakfast or they're moving couch to couch and they don't have a stable place to live, they're probably not going to be worried about learning about motivation theories and AP psychology, right? They're worried about their basic needs being met. So after that, we have belongingness, relationships, feeling connected on top of that esteem, right? Feeling like I'm, I'm accomplishing what I can. And then finally, at the very top, self-actualization. Now, Maslow would say that most people don't reach self-actualization. Everybody has the ability to, but only, I think he said 2% actually re reach that. And he believed like Abraham Lincoln, Gandhi, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, all were self-actualized, but not a lot of people do that. And you can see it's broken down into three big points here. So we got basic needs in the bottom, psychological needs, and then that very top self-fulfillment needs. Intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. You've probably heard of this. Intrinsic, performing a task because you find it rewarding because you want to do it, right? I'm reading Harry Potter because it's awesome, and it is. I'm not doing it because it's my English homework. Interest, curiosity, pride, achievement, all these things that drive us internally to do things. Whereas extrinsic motivation, I'm going to turn the lights back on. Whereas extrinsic motivation is behavior influenced by reward or punishment. So, right, getting, getting good grades, your parents paying you money, uh, getting punished, all those things are external rewards. Oh my gosh, my head's right in the way. I'm so sorry. 
over justification effect. Now this is this is super interesting. Uh, Dan Pink has an awesome TED talk from 2009 on motivation and this very idea of intrinsic, extrinsic motivation and its effect on creativity. It's awesome. Highly recommend. But the over justification effect is when an expected external incentive decreases your intrinsic motivation. Now, this is crazy. Let's say you like to get good grades. You work super hard in school to get good grades for yourself. You're not doing it for anybody else, just intrinsically motivated to get good grades. Now, if your parents come along and they say, that's awesome, you're getting good grades, I'm gonna pay you 100 bucks this semester if you get straight A's. That actually is going to decrease your intrinsic motivation. You'll still be motivated to do it. It's external though, right? It's not internal motivation anymore. Motivational conflicts. Conflicting motivations when we're making a choice. All right, there's four types right here. So the first one is approach, approach, and that's choosing between two good options. If you go to the ice cream store and you can only get a single scoop, oh man, you got some choices to make. You going strawberry, you going pistachio. Here's the answer, you go pistachio, because pistachio is awesome. But you gotta choose between two desirable options avoidance avoidance just the opposite choosing between two undesirable options i had a kid in class say either getting hit by a motorcycle or getting hit by a bus neither please i have experiences with my daughters would you like to lose your treat for hitting your sister or would you like to lose your screen time for hitting your sister right avoidance avoidance neither one's good then we have approach avoidance has both attractive and unattractive feature uh, for example, marriage. Now go with me here, right? Getting married, awesome. Can't wait. Best decision I ever made, right? Marrying my wife, she's amazing. But we also had to move apartments. I had to move apartments. Oh, I hate moving apartments, right? So good, get to marry my wife, bad, got to move apartments. And then multiple approach avoidance is two or more. Going with that marriage example, when marriage includes also moving to a new city, right? So I get married, but I also have to move. And then I have to get a new job, which means more money on this side, but maybe also higher stress. So there's multiple good and bad things going on right here. All right, awesome. Let's do some review. First question, after school, Scott, great name, and his buddies were complaining how hungry they were. So they go to Scott's house, immediately open up his fridge to look for a snack. Which of the following is a theory of motivation that best explains this behavior? Think about it. Can you do it without the options? Here's the options. So we got social learning, self-determination theory, arousal, drive reduction, or achievement motivation. I'm going to give you three seconds. Think through it. What do you think? A, B, C, D, E. The answer is D for diner. See? See what I did right there with the diner picture? D for diner is the drive reduction theory. Nice. Next one, Aspen, she tutors other students because she likes to be helpful, whereas June tutors her classmates strictly for the pay. Their behaviors demonstrate the difference between, do you know it? Between primary and secondary drives, instinctive and derived drives, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, appetite and aversive motivation, positive and negative reinforcement. Now, what is going on over here? C for cookie dough, B for bread, Think about it. What's your answer? It is C for chef. I know it's tricky. It's tricky. I'm trying to mix you up here. All right, one more. Let's try this. For scientists who study animal behavior, a genetic programmed action pattern is defined as habit, instinct, adaptation, altruism, or releasing mechanism. Nice scene right there. I was at the I wish I was at the beach. And yes, you're right. It is a B for beach. Well done. Students, do me a favor. Go ahead, write a 20 word, one sentence or so summary of your notes. It's gonna help drive in that information. If you wanna be a super student, click on the next video. Start learning about these types of motivation. Thanks so much, you guys are awesome.